May God fill you all with great hope and joy and peace in your believing. Amen. Our message today for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost and for Father's Day is actually pieces from all three of our scripture readings from 2 Corinthians 5, our Gospel according to St. Mark, and Ezekiel chapter 17. The common theme, of course, is the growth and the tree and how God nurtures us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you can dream it, you can build it. The late Walt Disney said that. The dream, of course, he meant is the passion we have and should fuel our desired creative outcomes. That gave him the inspiration for what became Disneyland, so families could come together and enjoy fun time together. A born work addict creating that place eventually taught him how important family was and just being a dad. And we're remembering dads today. All men who parent or support, nurture, love, and guide us. Even if you're not a dad, you may still have one or remember him as he is now with our Heavenly Father. That is where my dad is since 2010. Growing up on a farm in Wisconsin, working 30 years at a General Motors assembly line, gardening was his passion. Lots of people find satisfaction and enjoyment in gardening, and my dad grew everything, from rows of strawberries to rows of corn, and those unusual green turnip-like things, kohlrabi, one of his favorites, which is actually very good. But I did not inherit the green thumb from him. I plant it, I water it, it doesn't do well. Last year with Seoul, we made what was called seed bombs out of recycled paper and wildflower seeds. And I planted ours in our backyard and it did not grow. But this year, I have wildflowers growing up everywhere except where I planted it. <laughs> God in scripture takes, talks a lot about gardening. Eden had gorgeous trees, pleasing and tasty to eat. And one in particular, a tree causing Adam's lack of trust, choosing sin over communion with God. And God viewed his people, often in scripture, as an oak or a cedar or a forest or a vineyard. But by the time Ezekiel from our Old Testament is a prophet, it's about 600 years before the time of Christ. Our Father in heaven has been trying to get his people to remain close to him. And it hasn't been easy. He disciplined Judah, which was one of the 12 tribes of Israel, and they descended from Jacob, and they're exiled at the hands of Babylon. And still God kept his promise that his people's king will be related to David. They're exiled, but not left destitute. And Ezekiel paints a wonderful word picture with a large tree image making God's point real. This tall cedar of Israel which all of his hearers believed and understood, is losing the shoot at the very top, and a new tree will grow. Cedars in Lebanon are beloved. Last month this year, with all the cross-shelling that continues to go on in the Israel-Gaza area, the cedars of Lebanon are mostly now on fire, which was still an important image. Even on the Lebanon flag, it is still an image in the middle of a cedar, Still, the people there cling to the idea that the cedar is going to represent peace, glory, and God eventually. And their hope, this journalist wrote, that the cedars that are caught in the cracks and the crevices of, tr of rocks and hills, they'll be spared, and that'll be the image of this remnant that God promised back in Ezekiel's day. The same Lord God who allows the nation of Israel to lose their standing is the same Lord God who breaks off that tender twig from the top of the sturdy cedar, and that is their glory, not the shining armor that we imagine the Messiah and the Savior will bring, the seed of whom they're carrying in their heritage, their family tree. That is what is so important. That is the glory, the promise of salvation. And that small remnant of people believe and hold on to that, which is very humbling. And it's meant to be humbling. Something large that becomes great when it becomes small. 
Anytime arrogance increases, humility must be developed. For years, God spoke through the prophets to trust in his power to make things right. Repenting and believing, becoming trademarks of their faith. They lose everything near and dear to them, even the promised land, which he gave them anyway. What's lost then is really a gift. I remember teaching school. I would say to the kids, and these were the older ones, not so much the little ones, everyone starts with an A, but it's up to you to maintain it. Some would, some wouldn't. In other words, the grade is kind of like a gift, and especially in art classes, where everyone has some form of creativity. But a bad attitude or just a disinterest, well, that's really not an A personality. The lofty cedar of Israel felt it could take care of itself. They didn't need anyone. It conspired with Egypt eventually to even overthrow the Babylonians, which does not work. God had a plan. And God wants them coming to their senses, as he wants all of us to come to our senses, to trust him, believe in the saving help, be filled with hope, showing mercy. And just like that, God snaps a twig off from the top of their game. Just like that. Taken away from their neighbors, their friends, their families. No longer do they have strength in numbers. They're small, weak, demoralized. But will this tender sprig stuck into the mountainside Grow. Now all of us, a time or two or many, maybe many times, felt broken off from something big and sturdy. Many things cut us down to size. Blunt words, silence, cold shoulders, criticisms, maybe a work reassignment, maybe a full life relocation, maybe losing so many long-standing friends and connections. Maybe even sometimes you think the close friends you have in proximity aren't as strong as the ones far away. Major support systems are shaken. Maybe it's a divorce that left you feeling broken off or a death of a loved one, the loss of memory, the loss of a skill. When my dad had died, my mom said she found it strange because being a widow now, still having friends and church family and community families. As soon as he died, within a month, immediately, all the friends of hers that were couples, she lost. And she never really understood that. She said, I'm no threat to them. We've been friends for 30 years. Why not still? But that's often very common because it makes people uncomfortable. They don't know how to deal with that loss. But to whom do we turn in those times when there's loss? What about our faith? Blaming God is always a normal human response, and we should never be overly guilty for that because we've all been in that place. The problem is we never can stay in that place. Otherwise, we become bitter or we become more in love with the pride, that emotion, because even a negative emotion can sometimes feel good. It's easy then to drift away from God if we hang on to that. But then we do get cut down to size because God's words always remind us and brings us back to face our problems. We hurt and yet we crave mercy. And this is where grace comes in. Our tight grip on what we have loosens as the love of God grows into a relaxed way of living. God's word and spirit plants in us that grace and from there we produce fruits of faith. Healthy hope compassionate, caring responses to life. Any high tree that grows big gets cut low. Any low tree is made high. Any green tree is dried up. Any dried up tree flourishes. There is no more male or female. All are one in Jesus Christ. All are creatures in Christ. All are made new. Once enslaved to our own worries and pain and trauma, sin and death, now comes freedom. From the outside of ourselves, the Savior will be God, but also a man from that family tree going back to Eden's garden with Adam and his family there. God takes that sprig and places it on a high mountain, and that is Zion, heaven coming down to earth, where the the meats and the wines and the fine food get served, flowing with milk and honey, the promise of heaven. Salvation is always God's work, never ours. When God saves, everyone knows that he is Lord. For grace and mercy and love, those are all his divine reputation. 
And it's not just that God has a knack for making things grow. He doesn't have a green thumb. He takes what is dead and gives it life. His planting brings everyone into a new and a right family relationship in the Savior Jesus Christ. The sprig broken off is the child of the Most High from Mary. This is why God doesn't cut down or destroy or knock over or burn up the cedars or any image of his people. He recycles and renovates and shows it off in front of the world like a city set on a hill that a light for all nations to see, which is why that is in our baptismal formula, a light for all to see that God may be seen as the giver of all good things. And when planted, it is the smallest of seeds, just like that mustard seed Jesus talks about. But when it grows, it becomes taller than everything else and puts out branches that other creatures may live in its shade. God repairs humanity in Jesus and he restores all who trust in him with forgiveness. Trust that is and always will be enough to cure our woes. Jesus' earthly life looks more like probably a mustard seed than it does a tall cedar. He's born in the middle of the night to a young, betrothed, pregnant mother. Laid in a manger, there's no room for them with anyone else in the inn. Spending toddlerhood as a refugee in a land of Egypt. A carpenter's son, raised to do manual labor in a less than stellar corner of the Roman Empire. And yet Jesus' ministry thrives among the people that others were ignoring. The women, the children, the tax collectors, the so-called public sinners... The first are last and the last are first. The hungry are fed, the overfed are sent away empty. And just to make sure we all get that point, living in a culture in love with its own seers of power that we see and hear, on the cross Jesus showed us that his power, his glory, is revealed in weakness while dying between two criminals, naked and bloody and despised. And on Calvary's cross Jesus is planted onto dead wood beams raised up on a mount for all to see, and yet bearing branches and producing fruit in his life through the holy death and resurrection. He's a noble cedar under which every kind of bird, that is, people of all nations, can find rest and restoration with their Lord. It doesn't matter who you are. You have protection. You have a permanent home in Christ, who is a splendid cedar, a low tree that God made high. Now, Jesus doesn't leave you all alone. His protection on this new chapter in your life of faith is right there with you. Your home with Jesus does not change. It is permanent. He doesn't walk out on you. He is completely faithful with you all the time. He is in you all the time, dwelling inside your body that you move with him because you are the building from God that is now strong in him, a permanent shelter. And he knows what's best for us instills love and patience and compassion and faithfulness into us. And those are gospel words. They guard us. They're not fences to keep others out. Boundaries, yes, they are important. They help us grow in grace and not legalism. Like coming to church on Sundays. Jesus wants you here to feed you and speak with you and hear you. He writes his name on your heart with baptism in the scriptures, welded by the fire of the Spirit's constant work. Into your mouth comes the holy food which grows from the fruits of the cross and out of your mouth grow the special gospel that you share with your loved ones and friends as you greet them each and every day. This growing that we do in the faith takes time. Just like a tall tree takes a lot of time to grow, God takes time with you and me. Doesn't mean that we there won't be a few less dreamlike days. Doesn't mean that you won't feel like you're not much of a building, really. You will feel like you've, not, you've grown enough. That's okay, thanks. But it's in all those moments that Jesus is really present. When you feel him most are in the times we need him most. And how amazing that Jesus comes to us in small and large ways. Like a mighty cedar, like a small twig. But no matter what, he's planted you where you need to be. His dream, his building, our life together. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.